everybody. Welcome to Creative Bug. We're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I'm super excited because Velocity from The Loom is here. And Hi. if you are not familiar with this amazing tool, Velocity is the founder and creator and inventor of this awesome tool. And what does it do? It makes pom-poms, tassels, friendship bracelets, cords, and small weaving all in one tool. It's <laughs> phenomenal. Okay, this is what it looks like. That's it. So simple. Yep. And it's made out of uh, bamboo? Um, poplar and then um, bamboo on top. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's lightweight. And you can do all of that with this one little tool. Yep. Yep. So if you have, are checking out the lens right here, look at this. These amazing pom poms. We're actually going to do a color blocked pom pom today. Velasine is going to show us how to do that using the loom. And it's really exciting because this month you have a new project that just launched. Yes. Tell me about the book. Yeah, so I have this book out. It's called Loom Party with Abrams, and it has and it ships with the tool also. So you, everybody gets the same um, loom tool, and then it is a book with um, some basics on top of in the front about yarn, color symbolism, how to plan colors, basics on how to make pom pom tassels, and all the different five crafts, and then it's about seventeen projects <gasps> altogether. Um, so cool, from and from a variety artists. of artists. Yep, yeah, yeah. Um, you being one, yeah, and then um, Aruna is in there, who I think is, is doing a project with you guys yeah, as well. Yeah, Aruna Buku. from Buko was here last week, and she also has a project in here. Um, I love this cord. So this you can make into a necklace. Yep. You yep. can use it as like a package tie-on, a curtain, like a, a curtain tie-back, a ring. <laughs> I'm telling you, this tool does everything. I love this. this. This is so cool. Yeah, I love. I'm super obsessed with knots too, which is so cool. There's some really oh. fun projects in here. This is Aruna's, right? Yeah. So this includes leather. Um, there's like a lot of good ones. And this, this, I think this tool is really great if you have like a lot of just I don't know bits and bobs of craft materials mm -hmm. or just yarn laying around your house. All the projects. Um, take anything between like maybe 15 minutes up to three and a half hours. So Depending on the level, yeah. yeah, and it just you could use it with almost any type of yarn you have around and pieces of you know craft that you might want to get rid of. Or this whatever. is like one of the most highly anticipated books of the crafting <laughs> world, you guys. <laughs> and we're doing a giveaway. So if you like, comment, and share this live, then you're gonna win this. Potentially, you could win uh, this book that comes with the tool and this adorable little gift set. This is where's this little basket from? Hand painted basket. I painted it myself. <laughs> you did. Oh my and God, then so the cute. basket is actually from this um, social enterprise um, based in the Bay Area here. I love it. They work with um, women in Oaxaca. <gasps> That's yeah. so awesome. So nice. And then um, one of these really cute little pom pom necklaces and a bunch of this really cool yarn that we're going to be using for the color block pom-pom today and this mm -hmm. is a specialty yarn can you talk a little bit about yarn choice or? yeah yeah so for this project we're going to use this um, omega krill which is an acrylic yarn that's made in mexico um, we'll show up a link of, um, of where you can get it but the colors yeah. are just so beautiful and i love working with it because it falls really well some of the other things you see here so these pom-poms and then the tassel over there are yeah, made with they're it. all made with this Omega Krill, this uh, really thin, oh sorry, not that one, this one, this really fine like Mexican embroidery yarn. So pretty. Oh god, I love this project. <laughs> I know, it's I so just, cute. Like, I don't know where I want to put it. It's almost as <laughs> fabulous as Charlie's tail. Yeah, <laughs> it oh could be god, a boa for Charlie. Oh, so cute. Um, but you can use other types of yarn mm -hmm. with this tool, right? So yeah. th these are some other pom-poms and what kind of yarn is this? Yeah, so I just, you know, for this I just use um, wool yarn that I had in the studio and then I just mix it with a whole bunch of other thinner, colorful oh, yarn. Cute. This was inspired by the rainbow sprinkles that we see. I love that. Um, like cookies and ice cream. Exactly, and exactly. And then something like this, this, this one I just used literally one day I was just like, oh I have these tiny little bits of um, yarn, so I just mix them together, and this is acrylic. Some is wool. I love it. Um, you know, some is a blend. So anything, like, look at this yarn. It's like a mohair with tiny little bits in it. Oh my yeah. god, it's so cute. It's like cheetah print. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I and love you know, that. you could do a color block pom pom with whatever you have around. That's so cool. And then um, I always forget. I mean, I use this tool. I have it, but I always forget about the friendship bracelets. This is such yeah. a sweet project for an any age. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I love the difference in size here. So. 
This is like a wool yarn? Yeah, that's a wool yarn. It's a bulky yarn that's hand dyed so and it's indigo. indigo. It's so pretty. Yeah, yeah. Right? You could add like a little brass clasp to that. Yeah, so pretty. yeah. And then this is just like a fine, like kind of more traditional. Yeah, I think what I use for this is also like, yeah, like a light blue yarn and like a, a pink yarn. So there's different patterns that you could do on the, with this tool for friendship bracelets as well. Is that in the book? Yep, it's in the book. That's yes, awesome. it is. And then I love this necklace. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so cool. And this is, this looks like kind of like t-shirt, right? Like yeah, it's just, um, it's just salvage t-shirt. So like the other night I was literally at the office and um, I made this cord with it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, gosh, you know, I feel like I want to add something to it. And then I just started just playing around. I mean, I think this is a nice thing about this tool is that just depends on what material you have. And sometimes you want to push yourself creatively. I just started threading fun. the extra that I had and then I cut the loops and this is what came out. I so love it. I don't know. <laughs> it's so great. It's like it's a true inventor's mind. You invented the tool and then you're like kind of inventing your projects as you go along. Like yeah, yeah. You adapt, which is awesome. So um, show us how to make these amazing okay. color block pom poms. How do we start using the tool? Okay. And, uh, just like a PSA, if you're doing this along with us, remember to get a plate or tray because mm, when we mm -hmm. do the trimming, which is like really yes. the most important thing about pom-pom making, yeah. I feel like people forget to tell you. Yeah. To get that perfect pom-pom, it's all about the trimming. So make sure you have something because we're going to be trimming a lot and there's going to be like lots of little yarn fibers. Yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll have more fun when you don't have to clean up the mess yeah, after work. Exactly. So. Okay, so with these color block um, pom-poms, again, you could just grab whatever yarn you have around. We're going to use um, this Omega Krill yarn, which is actually really thin. So I just recommend, you know what, five colors oh, okay. tends to be a really good formula. I've Fun. tried it with, with three and four. It doesn't look the same for some reason. So five. we, you and I could trade off. You just yeah. pick whatever color you want. So what I like to do is I just take, you know, just a string here, mm -hmm. and then you're just going to... so. If you're just making a plain pom-pom, these notches are great because you could just secure it here, but because okay. we're making color blocks, we're actually not gonna um, put it into the notches. So oh. you're just gonna start winding your okay. yarn. So and hold your tool horizontally yep, like this. Yeah, exactly like this. And then you're just gonna um, wind. How tight? Not too tight, not too okay. loose. If you do it too tight, it's gonna be really hard for you to tie it, tie it later. Keeping your winding like maybe like a half an inch block okay. and just build on that. So. Here's the thing, I like to go with this specific yarn, about 75 revolutions, oh. don't worry about counting. But if you're using a thicker yarn, maybe go like uh, about 40 revolutions. Okay. So thicker yarn, I mean um, worsted Even for, weight yarn. for color block, this is just for one color, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Just for one color. So it doesn't really matter where you place it, just keeping it as a block. Okay. Um, and the key to making any type of um, kind of tight, dense pom-poms like this is that you want to um, make sure you use enough yarn. If That's you don't smart. use enough yarn, you're going to get more of like a starbursty look like this. Gotcha. You have a like a shaggy. kind of anemic pom-pom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So oh, once you're done okay. with that, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to go a little bit more because, you know, it never hurts to do more. And then you're just going to cut. Does it matter if you cut up here or down here? Uh, it doesn't matter finish? on a pom-pom. Okay. With the tassel, it does matter. But with okay. pom-poms, it doesn't matter. Set that aside. Okay, now switch. I'm going to switch. Okay. And then you're just going to do the same thing. So the, for and do the, it next to it or on top of it? Next to it, yeah. Next so for it. the first two colors, I would just go next to it. And the key to color blocking is keeping the separation of color okay. really distinct like this. And this is actually... Um, How are we going to fit five on here? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Wait and see. <laughs> okay. So, and you know, you don't have to be totally formulaic about this. It doesn't have to be like 75, 75, 75 everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can just play around, but I like, you know, the first time I make pom-poms, I always like to just um, have a formula and then that way everything looks good, comes out the way you want to. Um, cool. And then you can start experimenting the more you make. Okay, I'm gonna. I right, remember you guys were live and you can write in, ask questions. It sounds like we have a couple questions. Go ahead, Erica. Yeah, our first question comes from Phil Rushmore. Hi, Phil. <laughs> um, the question is, these pom-poms look really dense. They almost look like felt pieces. Is it the tool, the wool, or the technique? So Phil is asking, how come these pom-poms look so fabulous? I think that's what you really meant, Phil. <laughs> um, he said that they look really dense and juicy, right? And is it the tool? Is it the material? Are we using, is it because we're using wool? Or is it the technique? It's definitely the technique. It's just enough yarn. Most people, you know, that I've seen, I teach so many classes, a lot of people, it seems like you're winding a lot of yarn on and it's actually not a lot. So when I say a lot means 
with worsted weight yarn, which is the most common type of yarn, most people are winding maybe 50 revolutions, and really mm. what you need to do is go between 120 to 250 revolutions on this type of tool. Gotcha. And the, the, the wool. The is more it, yarn you, Yeah, sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. sorry. Um, the more yarn you put on, basically the bigger your pom-pom. Okay. And I'm telling you, the trimming is key also. Yep. That's like, because if you don't trim enough, you get like, uh, the last name was saying, like kind of a starburst. You get something that's a little bit looser and looks a little less dense. So you'll see what happens when we do the trimming. That's all. I feel like that's really important yep, too. Yep, exactly, exactly. Good question, Phil. Okay, so now you and I are gonna just go ahead and and, um, and wind the rest of our other colors. You could on go top. on top. You don't have to go like exactly on, on top of this one color. You could just begin to, you know, make your pattern. It doesn't really matter. It's going to come out looking really good as well, as long as you just keep it in blocks of colors. Okay. All right. Okay. Blocks. Blocks are blocks, the key. Blocks. Blocks. Um, yeah. If we have any other questions now, it was a great time to ask. Go ahead, Erica. Yeah. We have a question from Kimberly Kaplan. She asks, where can you get the Mexican embroidery yarn? Oh, that's a great question, Kimberly. Thank you for asking it. Um, this yarn is really particular. Velasny totally recommends it. And you said there's one source for that online, right? Yep, yep. It's called um, Creative Yarn Source and uh, for the U.S. And just put in Omega Krill, Omega C-R-Y-L, and then it'll come up. And they're only a buck ninety a skein, which is great. For the great. whole ball, which is awesome. And Erica's going to post a link to that so that you guys can find it easily. But remember, Velasny said that you can also experiment with other types of yarn. So mm -hmm. feel free to use what you have on hand. I feel like pom-poms and weavings and tassels, these are great things. Oh, what do you do if, I was gonna say, these are great things for your scrap yarn that aren't <laughs> fit for like a, you know, making a scarf or something. What do you do if you're getting these yeah. things caught? So what you can do is you can <gasps> just cut it if you want. Oh, okay. Or you can just lay it back on top. Lay I don't want to cut top. your finger, that's why I'm like. Ah! But make sure the colors Stay. are, okay. yeah, the colors. This is, this is like real troubleshooting in the moment, you guys. Yeah. I'm gonna trim it, is that okay? Yeah, you could totally trim it. It's faster. <laughs> okay, I like that. All right, For now sure. I'm gonna stay with my color blocking here. I also, when I make these color block pom-poms, I also like to always have at least one super bright color and then one neutral color. I think that's great advice. You I'm know, using like, this like weird kind of dusty brown that I normally wouldn't pick, but I bet you it's gonna look awesome with these neons. It's really pretty. I feel like the mix between past, like a couple pastels, one really um, bright color, and then one or two neutrals looks is such a great formula. I like this right now. It's perfect. Oh. Neutral, pastel, and then um, a super bright color. Okay. So I have one more color to go. Yeah, me too. We'll use that pink. Oh, we'll switch. I know this Great. pink is totally irresistible. Can you tell? This is the one that's been used the most. It's so <laughs> amazing. Thank you, Mexico, for making incredible colors and appreciating incredible colors. I feel like India this would be a great place to travel. Oh my too, goodness, color, too. totally. It's also the land of pom poms too. <sighs> I know. Have you been to India? I have only once. Oh my gosh, I loved it. It's just so. It's so visually beautiful you know it's That's just awesome. like everything in in crafts is everywhere there and it's just it. you know and everything like every piece of clothing every building it's just so beautiful there so i feel like this is a lot of yarn but it's okay yeah it's is okay. It also okay that my yarn does not look as good as your yarn no no it's okay <laughs> don't <laughs> Do you see her perfect wraps? Because my wraps are not perfect. <laughs> it's all right, because you know I've made like a thousand of these already. That's okay. That's perfect. Okay. And then what I'll, I'll um, talk about a little bit, we could do, because we're going to actually wrap the string around the the yarn bundle, so see how <gasps> your gap I don't have is. A gap. It's okay. It's right there. Okay. I was going to okay. say, it's totally okay, because we could actually use a needle to guide. Oh, okay. Guide the string see, around. See, there's, there's so not a big deal. It's a very forgiving tool. Yep. And a forgiving process. And I think also this tool is um, this model. The, the, I actually we actually have um, three models, but this model in particular is really great for kids too. If you work with oh, kids, smart because it's because it's straight sides, yeah. yeah. And it's just like they could wind in. Even if they wind stuff down here, you can actually pull it up a little That's bit. That's smart. Yeah. yeah, I feel like yeah. this would be an amazing tool for a birthday party because yeah. kids, you know, like instead of taking them to the bouncy house, which I know every kid loves, <laughs> this would be so much fun. And then you get to be crafting. I feel like it's very positive. Sounds like we have a couple more questions okay. before we move on to our next step. Yes. Um, Dennis Anderson asks, how did you come up with this tool? It's one of my favorites. Oh, Janice? Uh-huh. 
Janice Hi, Anderson. Hi, Janice. Thank you so much for writing in. Did you hear that? She said, yes. how did you come up with this tool? It's one of my favorites. We agree. It's so awesome. Yeah, how did you come up okay, with this? Okay, so the tool, I don't know if you guys know what the um, the Lucette is. So Lucette is like this this ancient medieval Viking tool um, that the Vikings actually used to use to make a cord. So basically makes us cord. I wanted you to say a Viking pom-pom. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we can change okay. it to that. The Viking we, pom -pom. we can rewrite history. Um, oh, so they use it to make this cord. Okay. This cord for like, you know, when they're, I don't know, I guess sailing around the world yeah. or whatever. Um, and um, it looks like a harp with the with the stick on it. So that's based on that. But once we added these notches, it just converted this tool literally into a five in one, which is like the most amazing thing about it. And and I designed, I just kind of reshaped the design a little bit to make it functionally strong. Mm -hmm. like and adapt it to like the different needs that we have. So that's yeah. kind of, and I've always loved designing. It's just like, I've always been like kind of a geek about product and its utility and things like that. So I love that, what a great story. And yeah. how old is um, the loom now? So we started selling the tool in 2015 because mm -hmm. that's when we filed the patent for it. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's actually that that process is, is really fun and it's exciting and it's there's a lot to learn around that, but um, but yeah, so we, you know, we, we kept being told, don't show anybody until right. you have it filed. That makes so. sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, it, it, it does come in three different ones. Yeah. Does this, this one's called the A? What's this called? This one's called the Big A. Big A. Because so it's, it's like an yeah. A. So it's like an A it. upside down. Yeah. Um, and, and there's like a robot one that looks like a yeah. slingshot. Oh, yeah. and then the slingshot. There's the three. slingshot yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. They're all really cool. Yeah. Um, we saw all of them at my shop. I love them. Yes. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Courtney is one of the first supporter, which is great. They're so, so cool. Yeah. Well, I actually met in a we met in a workshop. I was teaching an image transfer class, and she was transferring onto her tool. Which was oh so yes, awesome. I still have that tool. I love it. Yeah, and yeah. that was at Handcraft Studio School, which is a yeah, great which space is a for, great place. I mean, I for in person it, workshops, we love it there. And if you're even in the Bay Area or or coming here for a trip, it's just there's just so many great artists that teach yeah, there. Absolutely. So okay, wait. Yes, okay. It looks like you're moving on to the next. Step. Yeah, I know we have sorry. some questions. We'll get to them in just a sec. Tell me what we're doing next. Okay. So what you do next? Sorry. So I have some scraps here. So if you have a knot in your yarn, you could try to undo it, but this one's really hard. So just cut, cut it. it. So don't don't worry Use that about for it. Something else. Yep. Okay. So now you'll have something that looks like this, and you're gonna cut a. 18 to 24 inches of embroidery floss. I recommend embroidery floss. Really yep, that one's for you. Sorry, I'm like, um, because it's really strong and it's thin. I love it. And it doesn't stretch. I feel like that's it key doesn't. Too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, you know, you have to pull pretty hard to break it. And I do recommend DMC or a brand that's. Um, that has a strong reputation because sometimes some embroidery floss is actually quite weak. Okay. So for pom-pom tying, this this DMC for sure. DMC embroidery floss, you can get that at yeah. Joanne, I know, because we have so much of yeah. it. So yeah, just basic cotton. And go stack up on a bunch. Yep. Okay. okay, so now we're gonna tie our pom-pom. So all you need to do is turn this around and then you're gonna thread this under your, your yarn bundle like this. Okay. Okay. So just shimmy up this little bit. Yep. So as I mentioned, if, if you guys end up ended up um, winding your um, yarn, you know, so that you don't have a gap, just try to move it, or you can just actually thread this with the needle and work it through. Oh it's yeah, very needle easy. Or you know, that's a good idea. Yep. Okay, so then are we doing about half here? Uh, yep. So we're gonna go. Make sure your ends are even. Okay. Then you're gonna make a single knot. Okay. So okay. Left over right. Yep. Left over right. And it's just gonna rest on here like this. You're okay. actually not gonna tighten it. You're gonna take this end, which is your left end, mm -hmm. if you're right-handed, mm -hmm. and then take it back under here. Okay. Okay, and then you're gonna completely flip this over. Flip it over. Yeah. Okay. You got it, Courtney. Okay, now see how mine is off center? You're just gonna center it. Okay. Y yours is center and perfect. Okay, and now you're gonna. <laughs> what I like to hear. <laughs> now we're gonna make a surgeon's knot. So, okay, okay so let me redo that so a surgeon's knot is basically instead of a single knot you're working one of your ends so left, twice under yeah so, so left over right again over right yep so you have a double loop over yep and then tight down or and then yet? tight and then pull okay so, and then it will grab it's this is revolutionary and someone this is the greatest thing about working with i think with artists for many years i was making not tight knots a certain way but um, a friend of mine her name is Paige. um she 
um, does macrame, she's like, you know, Velocity, there's another way you could tighten this. And also for your students, it will be, it's such a great way to learn how to do it. Do it, right? Is this supposed yep. to stay? So yeah, so just keep it like that. And then now you're going to pull your yarn bundle off okay. the tool. And this is where it's good not to, you'll see, you know, not to wind too tight because if you do, it's, it's hard to get off. you're just going to probably use some muscle. Okay. Okay. So now you're going to pull again just to okay. make sure it's tight. Okay. And then you're going to close with a double knot. So exciting, you guys. I suspect that I did not use as much yarn as you that did. That color is pretty. Oh, I love okay. those three colors together. Okay, oh. so usually what I tell people is just pinch down. If it feels really tight and compressed, you're good to go. Yeah, That's you're good. good. Okay. okay. I'm going to do it again just to show you guys. I like to, especially... I'd like to make a third oh. um, time, and this is really good. So are you good. flipping it over? Yep. Okay. And then just making um, another tight double knot, and then I always end with a third knot. So it's like a triple knot at the Very end. Very so. thorough, you guys. <laughs> so. um, and this is good, especially if, let's say you have a business or you're making this as a gift. It's just nice to have it be really, really extra tight. Just never hurts. And this is a nice thing about using a thin embroidery floss is that um, it never shows if you're... You could make this four times, five times, and mm -hmm. it'll be fine. So that's good. That's I guess that's why we do the 18 inches to start with, right? Mm -hmm. Because exactly, exactly. All right. Got it. Okay, I'm almost there. I'm doing my third one. Sorry. Okay. No, take your time. And one more. <laughs> Put some lotion on so things are a little squishy. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. And then I just cut. Cut. You just leave a, a fourth of an inch or whatever. Okay. I know that a lot of people like to leave their um, thing, Nails. but don't worry. We're going to show you how to attach the pom pom later. Do you hear that? That means you can attach a pom, like a tail to a pom pom that already exists, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hot tips from Velasquez. <laughs> just because also when you trim, you don't want to spend time just like worrying about cutting this the Instead, tail off. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So now get your scissors. Okay. So sharp scissors and yeah. a plate, you guys. This is where the plate comes sharp in. Sharp scissors. And Those... we'll answer questions in just a minute. We're going to do some trimming and then. Okay, so now okay. you're just going to cut. I'm hoping so go those into are... the loops. Yeah. Oh my god, that purple Look at looks the amazing. Look is, right? This purple is so pretty. <gasps> How are those scissors good? <gasps> Look at oh, So exciting, you guys. I forgot that that color was even there. Oh my gosh, when you make an eye pom-pom, it's also exciting. That's it's so like cool. you see an eye pop at you. This is so cool. Okay. So you're trying to cut in the middle, right? I yep. hope I am. So you're going to, like, you could just take your scissors and just see if you have um, any more loops. Don't worry if you didn't get all the loops. It, they'll they'll come up later. Okay. okay. So, okay, so you have something like this. Okay, so mine looks weird, too. That's good. Yours looks perfect. So, oh, oh here, look, some loops. It I looks forgot. great. That's how it's supposed to look. So, so yeah, so Phil, you're asking about that dense pom-pom. This is what it looks like if you don't trim. Yep, Kinda exactly. Wonky, but also fun. <laughs> Okay, so now you're going to um, trim this, oh, sorry, wow, um, to make it round. Okay. So we have also this tool, I made this tool, it's a pom-pom trim guide. It used to be in cardboard, now I make it out of um, wood because apparently it's super life-changing for a lot of people, which is it. what I love to hear. It also doubles as a kumihimo cord maker as well, but you're basically going to take this round um, pom-pom trim guide. If you don't have this, you could just make yourself one. It's one and three quarter out of cardboard. Great. So uh, an inch and three quarters. So, yep. Okay. And it doesn't matter what, what pom-pom size uh, you need to cut. It's just going to help you get your pom-pom to around. Okay. okay. So ready? So you're so cutting off a ton. Yep. So you're cutting off a ton. This is, this is also the trick of making a really dense pom-pom is that sometimes it seems scary that you're taking a lot off, but that's, That's why it's the only fabulous. way. It's the only I'm not way. Not sure how great these scissors are. Okay. Oh, why don't we swap? No, Here. no, no. It's okay. No, I'll no. Start. Take this. I'll start. No, no. Because you know what? Oh I my want, God, I love this. I want you to have stuff. a great, great pom pom experience. Yeah. <gasps> oh yeah, this is better. Okay. Yeah. So same. now we, I think we ask, we have some. Oh, some questions. These as we're trimming, as we're trimming. Erica, are there any questions? Yes. Um, we have a question from Kimberly Kaplan again. Hi, Kimberly. She asks. Could you make these into a necklace like the one that B is wearing? If yes. so, yep. how would you do it? Yes. So the question is, can you make it into a necklace like the one V's wearing? And uh, yes, you can. And I'm sure we could. Yep. Do you want to talk about how you do that? We're going to show you 
af can we show you after we trim it? Yeah, um, sure. There's two different ways to um, attach a pom-pom, and then I'll go over those as well. I have it all ready for you, Kimberly, the little thread to go. Wait, let me ask, am I, mine looks like an ice cream sandwich. Yeah, that's okay, um, that's per okay. And that's am, am I going too much now? Nope, you're fine, you're fine, because the, the pom-pom's probably gonna be smaller. Okay. okay, so see how you have it like this? Oh, it's I pretty got trim. Real small, oops, okay. No, it's okay, It's because it, it's gonna, and now you're, because it's a three-dimensional shape, you need to turn it I don't know, is this 90 degrees? Yeah. And then you're gonna do the same thing and then and then trim okay. again. So this is how you get our, like a, an even round, like an even ball. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a, it's just a guide, I always okay. tell people. Yeah, you're right, these, these scissors weren't very sharp. Thanks for taking it. <laughs> But this is getting close, but it's still not perfectly round. So yeah. do I just keep rotating? Nope. Oh. Okay, so now now we're gonna set this aside. That looks okay. pretty good. And then I just like like lightly fuzz this up. Okay. So it's a little bit smaller, guys. I over trimmed Yeah, it. that's okay. Because we're gonna trim it down even more, okay. believe it or not. Okay. The haircut the haircut goes on. Okay. So the what I like about the pom-pom trim, guys, is that it helps you get to a round shape, which is, is kind of almost like point A for a round pom-pom. Okay. And I think for kids this is great, because for most kids, like they're super excited about this yeah. already, you know, and it's totally. it's just a good tool for that. Um, and it's still shaggy. This is a certain look, but if you wanted this kind of orb, um, we're gonna talk about another technique. So now okay. what you'll do is you're just gonna look at your pom pom standing up. You're gonna take one patch of your pom pom, like a small patch, and you're gonna trim it down to the. See how that density? That's really oh, good. So like almost flat. Ooh, yeah, flat or a little curve, whichever works for you. Okay. Okay. So once you have that little patch, mm -hmm. you're now just going to use that same guide and go around only one perimeter. Don't start moving your pom-pom around. Okay. Okay. That That is definitely one of the most important tips. Like naturally, I think, you know, when, when you're trimming a pom-pom, I think it's totally natural. Like people want to begin to turn it all around just to make sure you are Cut yes, I want trimming to. it. Yeah, exactly, right? I'm trying to and then trying not to. Okay. Fight the urge, fight the urge. And then um So, so it's like a belly band. You're just doing like the circumference. You're not turning yeah. it left and right and nope. up and down. You're just doing like And this is what's gonna help you get it here. round. Exactly. Okay. So usually I go about two or three times around just to clean it up. The first time is just to get it to the density that you like. The second or third time is just taking really little off. See how like the fuzz I have oh, yeah. on my scissors, it's so little. It's just to clean it up to make sure like ah! all the little bits and balls. Perfect. I think it's, it's okay. I think it's the side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now so now what you'll have is getting fuzzy. Okay. So now what you'll have here is kind of like a cylinder. It's like mm -hmm. really cleaned up and then you have these two kind of yes. shaggy ends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna clean up one shaggy end at the same time using the same technique. Okay, Okay. so you're gonna have to actually curve it a little bit as well. This is precise pom-poming, you it, guys. It is. I feel like this is like real hair cutting school, right? Yeah, I should <laughs> ask my friend Angela about this. this is <laughs> Like, what do you think about Velasne's trimming technique? Would you recommend using expensive hair cutting shears? Just, Just make sure your friend doesn't do this to a real customer. She won't. Okay. Okay. So now it's you're going to do... It's perfectly round. No, no. It's... Okay, hold on. Hold on. It Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Okay. And, you know, the nice thing about a pom-pom is that it's not going to be perfect the first but time. But the color blocking technique yeah, is amazing. Yeah, right? It looks really good. So also then I like to, like, just fuzz it. Once I have it really round, I like to fuzz it a little bit because it's still, you know, like you find little, little bits sticking out. So if you can shoot. see, my pom-pom is also still not completely perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now I'm just going to spend, it's like going to a real, like, a real stylist or a haircut. Like, you know how they take, like, at first they, like, Chop, 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 yeah. chop, and then at the end, it's just taking very little off. Just and this is what you're tuning. doing is to like I call this part sculpting. Yeah, that's a great sculpting word for the pom pom. I might be cutting a little deep in spots. I should probably not be doing that. Okay, uh, you still have a um, your yours is looking pretty good, I think. So, so encouraging. Thank this. You. <laughs> I'm a pom pom cheerleader. Okay, as we trim, more questions. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, we actually have a comment. Yeah. Um, here we have 
Eva R. Cullen mm -hmm. says, this is a great project for all the yarn I'm going to donate to Goodwill. Oh. Great. Yeah, Ava just made a comment. Thank yeah. you for writing in. Um, she said this is a great project to use with all the yarn that she thought she was going to donate to Goodwill, but now she has a new purpose for it. I think that's totally yeah. true. This is great for scrap yarn, precious yarn, or just like, you know, especially for, um, I would say for kids who are experimenting, like you don't want to give them your really expensive yarn to play with. So yeah. I feel like something like this is great for getting kids excited about making things successfully on their own or with some adult help. And then you can not worry about if they make a mistake or if they want to make giant pom-poms. And I feel like also like what I love about this tool and just kind of this project too, is that if you make something you could also just like give it to someone, you yeah. know, which is so special. I feel like, oh and it God, like yeah. who does what? If someone pom -pom gave me makes one everybody of these happy, pom -poms, I'd be like, yes, <laughs> um, it sounds like we might have some other questions. We yeah. Do. Can we perhaps touch on the school that you mentioned? Can oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we had mentioned ah. that V often teaches at Handcraft Studio School. That's here in uh, the Bay Area in Emeryville, uh, El Cerrito, rather. El Cerrito, yeah. In El Cerrito. Uh, and that's owned by Marie Muscardini, and she's a complete delight. And a yeah, lot of artists really that is. are on Creative Bug, including Velasini, um, often teach workshops there. I used to teach there a ton, actually. And we love it there. So you guys check that out if you're local. Of course, um, if you need more online tutorials, creativebug.com mm -hmm. is your source to go to. All right, so our trimming looks. Okay, how you doing? Looking good. Look, I mean, this is this your first pom pom? Monkey. Is this your first like? It's probably my first pom pom in about five years. <laughs> okay, I mean, I used to make this a lot of is not, not not in a while. This is this is not bad. This is not bad. See, if you didn't know the technique, I've never made a color what, block pom pom. Right? Before. I just made I think that's so ones. pretty. The colors. The colors oh my are gosh. great. And sometimes you see, I feel like, do we see a heart there? No. Sometimes you see like a surprise heart. That's kind that of That comes hard. out. It kind of is. And you could actually take like, um, like a pen or, um, there. or a needle. Yes. It's a and heart then with a single yellow sprinkle. You could pinch. Or you could take a tweezer. Oh, you just removed it. I was going to say you could use a tweezer and um, kind of re-help it. Yeah, and take that out. And then you could sometimes like cut the edge maybe to define the heart. But Cute. that might be a little bit. I'm, I'm missing the little <laughs> from man day one. I'm just going to. Keep trimming. Okay. All right. Are we good to yeah. show like how to attach it okay. or how to tail? Yeah. Okay. Do you ever do anything with all these little bits? Well, you know what? If I'm using a hundred percent wool yarn, so last week I had I made I think fifty mm -hmm. wool pom poms for um for a customer. I actually felt that up into a nut, like a felted ball. Oh yeah. So Phil was asking about felted balls. You could totally if you're using wool. So hundred percent wool. This is acrylic, but if you're using hundred percent wool, then you could felt it into a pom pom. Sounds like we have another question. Yeah. We're um, some questions about the excess. Um, yeah. What can you do with that? Any suggestions? Yeah, so that, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it sounds like people are asking, what do you do with these little scraps? And Vilasini was saying that if you're using 100% wool yarn, then you could absolutely use that for felting projects, mm -hmm. including making other pom-poms that are felted, which is a little bit different. Um, I bet you could make felted patches. We have a gr we had a really good uh, Live with Faith where she showed how to make like a little heart patch on a thrifted oh, wool sweater. Yeah, yeah. So you could do that. These yeah. ones are acrylic, so they wouldn't work for that. But honestly, to me, I'm like, oh, uh, I want to take a piece of packing tape. <laughs> <laughs> and put this all over the piece of packing tape and then use it to wrap a gift because it's like really oh fun. oh my gosh that's such a good idea I was I always think about tape and the wrapping. little knittery um, a couple weeks ago and um, Kat was using the scraps it doesn't actually matter what what type of composition your yarn is she had a customer who's gonna spin it into yarn so it looks like confetti oh, that's yeah, which is a really great idea. Yeah. And then, you know, I don't know. They're so pretty. Sometimes, like, I guess, like, you could make them almost like a sand. You know, remember those? Oh, yeah. What do they call Sand art? Yeah, where you'd, like, take yeah. a glass and then you make layers. That's a great idea. And you could just have, like, a jar, almost like your penny jar. But then every time you make a pom-pom, you, like, trim <laughs> in that and then press it down. That would be really fun. Some Definitely like, use a plate oh. or a tray, though, because otherwise this would be all over your carpet. Yeah, exactly. So do you see how, like, the... Yeah. the plate comes into play now it's so easy very okay handy. so now what you're gonna so what we're gonna do to attach the pom-pom you cut whatever cord you want um, to whatever length you okay. like here I made one just in case you want to use it as a necklace um, and then you want to take I like metal yarn needles I find okay. that metal they're yarn needle. nice and they glide really well and you just thread it okay, okay. so there's two ways to attaching a pom-pom so let me see if we have a pom-pom that's actually not cut yet. Okay, we don't. So 
What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your needle you with. Would, well, what's your tail look like? I would leave a really short tail. Sh like short tail on one end. Meaning one and a half inch. Yeah. On one side and the Because if it's really long, sometimes it Pain. becomes hard. Yeah. Okay. To take it out. That's a really so this good point. This is once your pom pom is trimmed. Mm -hmm. We should do this. Okay, great. Okay, and you're gonna take your needle and then you're basically gonna gently poke it. Poke just your pom pom. Anywhere. Yeah, just anywhere. And what you want to do is you want to find that the tight center cord and it should feel like a rock. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't stop laughing. Okay, so and then you're just basically gonna move your yarn so that you can see. Oh, I don't know if Taryn's gonna see this. Tight, Taryn, yeah. get in here. Can I you think see? you could see on mine. Oh yeah, look, look. Do you see it? So that tells you also how much you trimmed. Yeah, exactly. So did Vlasny trim better? It's than a I lot. Did. So my tight middle cord. Do you guys remember the embroidery floss? It's going this way. Okay, I found mine. I found mine. <gasps> <laughs> so okay we're not going to do it this way for this one but I'm going to show you guys if you're using a pom-pom to attach to let's say a purse um, a knitted hat you would actually just take whatever material you're using and then work your needle under this that middle cord okay so yeah you're like just diving under and there. pull okay. through and then this way you can make it detachable or whatever and over time it's just going to pull on this rather than the yarn itself okay. in the middle okay so now what, so as I we're was... We're not doing that though because nope. we're going to do a necklace. Is yep, that why? exactly. Okay. So if you're going to string it like this, um, th this yarn is going, the embroidery floss is going like this, so you're just going to take this. Okay, so that means, you guys, you do still have to find that middle cord. It's going all the way around yep. here. Think of this as your equator, and instead you're actually just going to poke through one exactly. of your, your north yep. or south pole. Yep, and do it gently. Okay. So you're going basically east to west on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay, do it gently. Perfect, okay. Now you're done. Ooh, so easy. I love that. So that you can like get together with friends, make a bunch of pom-poms, and then decide what you're going to do with them. Make keychains, yeah. make necklaces. I want to put something in my like car. And this is a great way for garlands. This is like oh. the method I would tell people. Yeah, garland. Yes. Um, garland. Sounds like we have a few more questions. Um, we actually have a suggestion for mm. the excess. Ooh, okay. Uh, from Melanie. She mm -hmm. says you can take the leftover bits with Mod Podge, make a hard finish and pour it over an inflated balloon. Oh! Wow. oh. Make a cute key bowl or coin bowl. Okay, Mel <laughs> Melanie, ha Melanie, right, has a yeah. great idea. So she's saying take your trimmings, your little bits here, so um, combine them with some Mod Podge, choose your fin the finish of your choice, and then pour it over an inflated balloon and let it dry, and that will allow you, once you pop the balloon, flip it back over and it creates a little bowl. So it'll be like a little confetti bowl. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> Fun. I, I want that. Melanie to Come do, do it and then show Sounds us. Sounds like a potential live shoot. <laughs> okay, cool. I love that. Thank you for your contribution. So right. you did it. Ah, I did oh, it. Oh. And then you just like, That's you just do good. like a little knot at the top here. Yeah, and then you can just like, you know. Double up here. Yeah. With, you know, with what I also like, see, see how I made it also, this is like a Starburst um, pom-pom almost that I just made a little attachment to this. So I this is the like same process, just mm -hmm. less yarn and not a not intense trimming. Because mm -hmm. if this was trimmed down, it would only be like a quarter of an inch big pom-pom. Yeah. I love it. And so this like literally took like probably a minute. Yeah. And it just adds a nice touch to it, like a so necklace. So cute. I mean, who doesn't right. like a pom-pom, right? Do you think oh Pop goodness. Charlie will wear this? Just kidding. He might try to play with it. Charlie's asleep on this bed. Um, well, thanks, V. Thanks for coming in and showing us all so these awesome fun. things. That was so fun. You guys, make sure that you like, comment, and share the post because then you could be entered to win. We will pick a winner mm -hmm. early next week. You'll get the Loom Party Book, 17 projects plus um, awesome how-tos. Comes with a tool. Also, this adorable hand-painted by Velasny basket that has all of this awesome Mexican yarn. And this little guy, what is this? Is this just a yarn keeper? Just like a little, it's like a, um, yeah, it's like a little bobbin. It's, we made it out of scrap of, um, from the tool and then just some string that you can tie your pom-pom. Oh, fun. Oh, I should, can we show this real fast? Oh, yes. We have one more thing we want to show you. It also, so the tool, as you guys know, just doesn't make pom-pom. It actually makes fruit pom-poms as well. <gasps> so this is a pineapple. How cute So that? this is everybody's favorite, so I feel like, I need to show everybody. Yeah. Makes everybody happy. So, so you can make strawberries. Mm -hmm. You can make eyes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love yep. it. 
Um, so, so cool. So make sure that you like, comment, and share. You can find Loom Party on Amazon. And I think you're going to be at Handcraft Studio School on May 5th, right? That's right. Yeah, so yeah. she'll be there on May 5th um, doing a pom-pom tutorial. You can sign up for that, too, on Handcraft Studio School. Three hours of pom-pom mastery fun. I know. <laughs> But check out, um, Last Thing Else has a great, on your website, she has a great place where you can find the Loom tool in your area just by state. So make sure you check that out too if you're looking to get the A, mm -hmm. the giant A, mm -hmm. or one of the other Looms to make your own pom-poms, weavings, and tassels, and friendship cords, and what's the other kind uh, of cord? Weaving? No. Weaving. Uh, Does friendship all the things. Friendship tassels. Yeah, I, I think we got it. Things. I think I so. It. Thanks for coming today. Thanks, you guys. It's so fun. Thank you. We'll see you on our next live shoot. Thank you.